This is Helicrafters Rehabs. Welcome back. Uh, been a busy two weeks. I took a little bit of vacation. Came back with some food poisoning. Got past that. Then we spent several days at uh, my dad's house doing the kinds of things that my sister can't do. Uh, he's getting more feeble and uh, we have this little pressure pad uh, when we spend the night there. Uh, either it's me or my sister. And uh, the pressure pad sends an alarm to a remote, sort of like a doorbell sounding monitor that lets us know when he gets up and then we watch him like a hawk to make sure he doesn't fall. He's getting a little bit more feeble all the time, but we're doing our best to keep him out of the uh, skill care and to keep him as mobile as he possibly can. But all are doing well. So today, uh, I'm uh, working on a buffer circuit to put inside the latest SX99. Uh, uh, receiver and you know I had the thought well what the hey maybe we could just throw it together a couple of terminal strips it's such a simple circuit a little bit tricky but it's probably not much larger than the kind of printed circuit board I was going to do uh, this is the uh, counter is not uh, actually calibrated or anything to any other than just raw signal coming in so it's a little bit looking a little bit unstable but anyway um, <laughs> this is what it looks like it's just a little a uh, couple of terminal strips put together uh, FET and a 3904 uh, a JFET and a 3904 transistor uh, straight out of Mr. Carlson's lab uh, YouTube channel and it's uh, it just had these parts so let's see if this will work it's certainly not going to melt inside uh, the K uh, chassis and where I put it I'm sure it won't these transistors are well away anything that could uh, affect them so as you can see, I'm looking at, uh, this is about, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think maybe it might be in the range. There we go. 22 dB signal, frequency is at 1000 megahertz. And so we just go up the scale here. And we can see on the, uh, scope there's a there's signal a little bit a little bit of distortion there but nothing at the and so we'll see how if we can get it to work this way just to play around and if it does we'll just leave it in that way otherwise uh, we'll go through the uh, printed uh, surface mount printed circuit board system So I got this thing wired in and started testing it. The signal was really pretty poor from the input to the output. Uh, power was no problem, but it just, and I would trace through here and uh, on each side of the, of the uh, transistor and the uh, JFET and basically the signal was nice directly attached to the cathode in here uh, through a 100 picofarad capacitor so i decided well what the hey how well would it drive it was it just wasn't driving the uh the frequency counter uh with a strong enough signal so how strong would it be if we just did a bypass it all with just a, a jumper? And the answer is uh, pretty good signal all the way through. 
So what I'm going to try next as a professional engineer is uh, always a professional minimalist. I'm just going to try various capacitors to uh, pick as a pickup. Like I'll start with, I may try a 50 picofarad pickup and then direct to the frequency counter. And, and so it'll be a really short, just a single uh, terminal strip with just a few connections to it. So we'll experiment a little bit and see how that works. So, it worked. <laughs> I can't tell you how many hours I spent coming up with a, a buffer that would be stable all the way up from 540 to 31 megahertz without any issues and the whole th time it was a matter of getting enough signal. Now, does it drag? Yeah, it probably will. Okay. But guess what? We can uh, adjust that. So, so, it's as simple as placing a, this is actually 47 picofarads in the Mr. Carlson's big video. It's um, 100 picofarads plus some other capacitors and resistors that you were uh, supposed to experiment with to get the right level of signal. Well, the right level of signal is just uh, 47 picofarad, 100 picofarad. I used 47 and it's working good. And uh, so there's nothing more to this than this little power strip right here. By the way, I haven't done enough um, precautions. I was, uh, a friend of mine was over here and he was looking at this stuff and I said, oh, this right here is 600 volts. And he says, I could give you a good joke. Yes, it can send you across the room. Okay, and there's there's some uh, videos I've referenced, I think, uh, talking about this can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And you, I know what I'm doing most of the time. But uh, just uh, be careful and use precautions. Discharge capacitors uh, before you work on this, uh, anything related to the power supply. B plus, B plus is all over the place from here all the way through here, uh, 300 volts. So, be careful. All right, so it works. Now, we're going to, we're going to, uh, the digital display is not programmed, so that's what we're going to do next. It takes nothing to do it, but I'll just show you how. But it's really very simple. There's two buttons on the left side. This is all seven volts, not a, not a, a uh, safety issue here and DC like a flashlight okay so you got two buttons one is a function button and the other is a uh, you know steps up or down uh, numbers and things like that it's right over here next to the power supply input so what I've done is I programmed this is just anywhere. A 455. And then the next thing that comes up is subtract instead of addition. You've got to make sure that U is facing up. I put a light level of 2. I'm using the function button. And now we're back. So we're just looking at band 4. Oh, that's the band spread. I'm not very good at upside down and backwards as far as tuning a radio. So look, we're up to 31 megahertz, no problem. A little bit of instability there, but not much. It settles down. Look at this. This is band three. Now, this is going to have to be realigned to the wrong way, upside down, backwards. 1590, okay. Turn the Going the wrong way, upside down, backwards. 
stable all the way through. So basically, throughout all four bands, the oscillator is adding 455 and we're subtracting it out. Alright, this is band 1. And it does pick up a few signals. There's one on 1070. There's a local station. Looks like it's right on too. But we'll we'll do it probably is not. It probably is not right on, on the dial down here. So, uh, and we want the two to agree. So we'll have to re realign this thing. So simple uh, programming. And we'll put this back together. And I'm gonna put some epoxy in here because there's really nothing I can use to anchor that down. But it needs to be anchored down. And then we'll put the case on and go from there. Let's turn this off. There we go. So I got the cover back on. Instant on. Look at that. And it was as simple as a 47 picofarad capacitor. <laughs> it's the only pickup needed. There we are. I had a little hum um, when the, with no signal, you know, just a no volume hum. There was a 15 mega ohm resistor over here in the audio output that had been pushed down and was shorting against a capacitor. So it was pretty easy to find. Just use your an insulated stick because you're working with hundreds of volts in here and uh, see if you can make the hum go away and, and do that deal. Okay. Instant on. No switches in the back to turn these things on and like I've done in the past. Everything very simply done. This is probably the, the best uh, rest restoration I've done yet. And I've got two over at the uh, Antique Emporium in Thomasville uh, that are uh, for sale. I just don't have room for them here. And there are no uh, ham fests going on uh, in order to sell them, but uh, anyway. Uh, this one, I, I don't just uh, restore them, I use them. That's how I found out about the time. And this one will be fun to use with the instant on. It's the only radio I've got with instant on uh, digital display. So all that was worthwhile. Uh, let me get the case on and we'll go from here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to check how much this digital display has created a um, a drag and a load on the oscillator. So, first thing we're going to do is just do a quick alignment. So we got this on five. 60, we'll turn the volume all the way down, okay. And the alignment's just fine on the low end. What about on the top end? At 1400. 14.03, that's uh, really hardly worth making a change. I mean, that's on the center of the line right there, 1400. Okay, what about, um, while we're at it, we'll go to 1000. Turn the volume up a little bit. And 
peak for maximum noise on the RF right here. First one here. Alright, antenna compensator. I think I'm going to need a signal, so I'll just tune in to 1070. I don't do the RF where the instructions say, because if you do that, you're going to be insensitive on the bottom end of the band and really sensitive on the top. Okay. There we are. So that is our peak right there. Okay, band two. No issues. Start out at four. Playing down. 4.03. Really hard to argue with that. If my memory serves me correct. Really hard to improve on what was already there. I'm not going to be able to do better than that. And then down on, let's say Really hard to improve on that. I don't think I put a drag at all on this uh, oscillator. So at 5.3. That's right at 5.3. <laughs> I think my low end adjustment. That's band four, that's band three. There it is. Right in here. We really are to fix do that any better. I'm gonna go up to probably 
I don't do it at the very end like they do in the instructions because there is aging stretching. All right, that's supposed to be 12, and we there we got some difference here. As we get higher and higher, we probably have more effect of the frequency counter. So all I need to do is find this slot here. Very little turns makes that. You know, so you pull it out and it's 70. Drop 30 kilohertz. So that's supposed to be 12. Probably not going to do any better than that. In fact, I hardly moved the knob to get to 12, so what does 5.3 look like? Lower end, always easier. Right on the nose, so we're not going to do anything different. Okay? Here we're going to have some difference. That's 13. Let's see if we can bring that down. inserted all the way so we're going to pull it out. Make sure the thing doesn't come out. That's 12. So I think we're we may be able to finish that out on the other end. So we'll go to 28. Yeah, I think we'll be able to finish that out on the other side. When we bring this down, the whole band will come down. I think I want to do it a little lower. Plus 28 on the nose. We'll be back. Let's go back to 13. That's 15. You see there's... So we went the wrong way on that. Hopefully we can see where we are. Oh, yeah, I still got some travel left. Not a lot. What we might do is balance the difference.
See, we're getting really not good registration on the band all around. 23, 32, there's 32, see. I think band 4 is going to be approximate, and you'll have to go with the digital. for noise at a peak. As soon as we find a slot. I may want to use the signal generator on this top band just to get the best. Can't tell. Just you can't tell whether I'm in the slot or not. signal right there too. There you are. You want that signal back. That's why you have to check it all out. And just getting this in the slot is the biggest problem. That's why you have to experiment with those with the pickup. Because right on the high frequencies, you can lose your oscillation. to within parallax of the dial. So you really you, you really start to lose it at the ends. Alright. Yeah, I still wanted to. Let's get that fixed. Let's go down to 15 and adjust the core. And we're going to move it over to the signal generator in just a minute. As we listen to BBC to Africa in English, uh, I've got it back together and uh, tweaked a little bit on the RF with the signal generator. Made a small improvement there on bands three and four. And clearly, with the 10,000 picofarad uh, mica in the oscillator circuit, 
is resulting in considerably less drift than the typical poly uh, capacitor or orange drop people would put in. It still drifts quite a bit, but a whole lot less than any others. So lessons learned, just a simple uh, 47 picofarad uh, pickup off the uh, cathode to the uh, to the mixer tube uh, goes straight to these uh, little Chinese frequency counters very nicely and uh, we get a nice signal through all the bands. Put it back together, had a hum. Oh no. So took it back, cut the case back off, looked, couldn't find the hum. Okay, no hum. Went the case off. Then put the case back on, hum. And it turns out, so it's all in the audio output section uh, where the hum is or was. So maybe I have a bad tube. So I went to the 6SC7 uh, audio amplifier tube. It's a dual triode. And it was barely seated in the socket. Oh. Properly seated, no hum. It was intermittent. Turn it upside down or sideways, you'd get the hum. Sometimes you could knock it <laughs> with your hand. The hum would go away, it was, and it was just simply an unseated tube. Lesson learned. Uh, put the tubes in firmly. Also, this case may have gotten out of shape in some way, catty cornered or something really difficult to get the screws in. I had to use clamps to line up the screw holes uh, on the sides to get it in. And I literally had to, um, with the case off, loosen this and then align it so there would be a place. Oh, we got a doorbell. But anyway, uh, I had to loosen this and I had to loosen that in order to get the um, uh, to get the case to seat on the underside. Tonight I'm going to see if I can get for you uh, the voice of the masses from Eritrea and I'll end it for this uh, video. The uh, voice of the masses from Eritrea in tonight is not nearly as good a conditions and so it's barely more than a carrier. So let's move this up to sedan. Radio Omdurman. A little better than a carrier, but not much. We'll do this on. Also a very weak signal tonight. Conditions are not nearly as good tonight as they were last night when I was listening to these uh, when, and there was a large hole in the solar atmosphere. So it's in its place where it belongs right now and uh, it's working really good. This is the SX-99 And here's the same station with the SX-100. A little better, a little better uh, sensitivity. So there you are, the difference between the two units. So, this is Halicrafters Rehabs. Thanks for watching, and thanks for the new subscribers.